how did this particular Gen Z protest begin? So there's no one uh, source of beginning. There's <coughs> excuse me, sorry. So this is what actually happens. Uh, members of parliament say they're going to pass the bill, whatever happens. People go online very, very upset. And they and David D calls Kenyans digital wankers. <laughs> that particular day, I was at a funeral mm. at Langata Cemetery, Jambikoikai's funeral. Yeah. And I was with a colleague of mine, mm. and I was going to cover the funeral. And I said, you know what? So it actually covering how the state of Langata Cemetery, because it's full. Yeah. Mm. So we said, let's go there to bury Jambi and do a story about and the cemetery. And also highlight the, yeah, the state of the cemetery. It, mm. it was full like 20 years ago. Mm. So we're there, and I, I scroll online, and I see that you're being called digital wankers. Mm. And I'm like, dude, we're not digital wankers. We can do more than that. So I tell my colleagues, you're going to go to parliament and do a video. So I go to parliament, and you do a video call Occupy Parliament, and say, we're going to come and occupy this parliament next week. And you put the video online, a million plus views on TikTok, and people pick it up and say we own this idea so it moves from me say let's go let's occupy parliament to everyone says we're going to reject this finance bill in total in totality totality before the beginning was there are elements of the bill that we don't want mm. but it became you know what this thing don't even amend it we reject it so the following week you say you know what we call guys and say what can we do what you normally do you design placards you say guys are going to show up but people should people actually send themselves you tell them come with a placard come with everything so it moves from being one one team's idea to everyone's idea so it's mm. owned by everyone mm -hmm. we notify the police and say don't choose they are going to go there and you go there on tuesday it's there are many people uh the police come as usual tear gas you say you're going to go back on thursday then you go back on thursday then you're going to go back the following week at every single juncture we let the police know we're going back and there are going to be many. But what they decide to do, you know the state hasn't changed its tactics. So week one, that's when the abduction started. Oh, we, we go, so people get arrested. Then lost sight of Kenya. Fedor Thiamboman, I'm a big fan. I think she's a patriot and mm. she's the, I, I think she's the best so far mm. under the new constitution dispensation. Um, so we, the police do what they normally do. They arrest hundreds of people, like 400 people are taken, are, are taken to Central, Kamkunji, all over. Uh, the lawyers go and escape fights for them. Some are taken to court, and the court acquits. So this boldens with the people to go back to the streets. Mm -hmm. Now the following week, which is this week now, uh, politicians realize they're losing the narrative. And what do politicians do every time? They hire goons. But before the goons were hired, uh, two days earlier, we told the police. We went online and said they're planning to destroy the city. They're planning to come and mess the city because we had two previous protests the previous week mm. not a single injury mm. not a single destruction i have a picture that i'm going to share today of a lady whose car <laughs> whose car back window was broken by the police mm. with a tear gas grenade up all, uh, outside family basilica people covered the car with matawi like they took leaves covered the car and wait for the lady to come so she could drive the car home safely without any any loss mm. That particular, that last week on Thursday, and even the pre, that Tuesday, people walked home safely. No muggings, not a single robbery reported, yeah. no shop destroyed, nothing like that happens. Come this week on Tuesday, the, the narrative changes. Mm. The ground is sh changing softly, like the ground is changing, and the, the idea is to actually occupy parliament. Mm. That was the idea. What does occupy parliament mean? Enter parliament or we'll go, the outside we'll parliament? parliament outside occupy, parliament. Yeah, and occupy parliament peacefully. There was no one who, was, who, had, who had ill intentions. Mm. But what happens is that the politicians realized we are losing the narrative. So the police had intelligence in the morning, or maybe the day before, that there's going to be planned goons coming to the city. Bonnie, just talk for a second. Yeah. Occupying parliament to what end? To what end? So to, it is like besieging parliament for them to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. So, so was the plan to enter parliament? There was no plan to enter parliament. It was to be outside Occupy on parliament, the parliament outside And then make them do the right thing. Uh, just to apply to pressure them, by your presence. To have them aware that the presence... We are outside and yes. we are watching you. Okay. okay. And you told that we begged the police, said, protect parliament, come and surround the entire parliament. We are going to be outside saying this is what you want. Let them hear us as they vote. Mm -hmm. Let them hear us as we, they debate. Okay. That was the plan. Okay. And even if you look at what Giuliani said, Giuliani said, you know what, uh, carry, carry those small speakers. Come, let's sing, let's dance. Mm -hmm. Come with their favorite songs. Mm -hmm. it, was like a, it was a protest party. Mm -hmm. It's like a block party. Mm -hmm. We are watching you, but we're doing it in a cool way. 
Then doctors came and said, we're going to have medical tents. And even this week, actually, someone had volunteered to give us uh, toilets in the city. Mm. Then the mosque, Jamia Mosque opened their, the doors and family bus opened the doors. It was a peaceful movement to hold our leaders to account. It was just a peaceful thing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and everything was being done within the constitution. So what happened? So what happens, internally, the government is at war with itself. That's the truth. So people in the government see an opportunity to undermine their boss and to do their own things. And they do what they did in Juja Farm. They decide, particular members of parliament from Nairobi area and Kiambu area, Kiambu County, are going to hire goons. And when the when the common knew they were going to be goons, he locked down the city to not to allow people to come in. And we should actually open the city because we would have actually had more protesters who are peaceful than goons. Because mm-hmm. the goons are not many, mm-hmm. but they're more violent. So we learned that goons are going to come to the city. We tell the police. Even Rudin knows about this thing. No, it was not a secret there were going to be goons in the city. But I also think Kome played into the goons' hands. Because what, what actually happened, when the goons showed up, the police retreated. And they, and they left the people to loot shops. But I also think the head of state actually was at play in this game because by the looting happening and shops being destroyed and courts being burnt and city hall and parliament, and I come back to the parliament fire, it gave a chance for the, for the head of state to actually deploy the military. But at, at the onset, they knew there was going to be goons in that city. What they could have done actually, withdraw the police from the peaceful protesters and go protect property. But what did they do instead? They shot peaceful protesters. They shot at people. They killed people. So the entire country is in mourning and because the police allowed goons to infiltrate a peaceful protest and cause damage. Mm. The last one week, we have had two peaceful protests. This week, politicians got involved and that happened. And what is very sad is that this country does not hold leaders to account. Last year, there was the expressway damage and people died. It was sponsored violence. No one was held to account. Mm. And because we never hold leaders accountable when they hire goons, they're allowed to do that over and over again because their, their, their playbook is actually if you get resistance, you hire goons. Mm. When people oppose you, you hire goons. Like yesterday, Rongata Ronga is actually another good example. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's an activist in the community who sent a message to the OCS, which I have, I have, I have screenshots, and the local NIS guy is telling them mm. the MP of the area is organizing a counter protest and it's going to be bad because. What you promise goons when you give them a job, you tell them, listen, I'm going to give you a thousand shillings each. I'll protect you from the police, but you have a chance to steal. So when goons come, they're coming to cause mayhem and steal because they know very well yeah. who's going to get blamed, the, peop- the organizers of the original oh, protest. The protest. Yeah. On Thursday, no, Tuesday. Yes. At this point in the afternoon, when people then gained entry into parliament Mm -hmm. where were you i was near parliament and i went all the way to parliament Mm. and then they realized there were were goons all over and there was police shooting people how did you identify them as goons uh they they raided the there's a restaurant there's a restaurant opposite uh city city hall Mm yeah Uh, there's a new restaurant. There's yeah. a Coca-Cola distributor. It's called Ashaki. Yeah, mm. Ashaki, and then there's a Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola distributor. Mm. They broke into that. There were protein fences mm. and carrying them away. There were. <laughs> I even met someone with the National Assembly fridge. So <laughs> it was clear that <laughs> yeah, <laughs> someone was carrying a fridge. Okay. Yeah, hey. hey, uh-huh. a fridge, mm. and I realized this is not your not ordinary protest. These are not your guys. So they decided to do is mm. to withdraw and start telling people to go home because mm. it's going to become bad. Mm. But when you talk about the parliament and what actually happened at parliament mm. the people who went to parliament first were actually did not go and cause any damage mm. uh the destruction and the breaking of chairs and the fire at parliament was caused by police officers what the police did actually to just create this confusion to say to justify the killings they set fire if you go to parliament you go behind parliament where there was a fire actually any media house actually go and go and do a checkup at the back of uh, the Kedeta of Salem at the back, that's where the fires were lit. If those guys were planning to light a fire, it would have been said parliament. So it wasn't inside parliament? It was No, 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 no. And then the people who went inside parliament, and you can see they were doing selfies and videos. The protesters who made inside parliament did not break things. They were doing pictures and selfies and sitting on the chairs. 
But when they left, the police came and said, you need to justify the massacre. And they broke up a few things here and there. The destruction and the fire at parliament mm. was done by police officers. So not even the goons? Not the goons. The, let me tell you, you're trying to get, you're trying to get into parliament and you're trying to see what can I do here mm. or what can I take? So they went and ate. Mm. Some guys were eating. Also, what can I carry away? You don't go there and say, let me set a fire. So the fire was actually done later. So go to parliament today. And this is a, I heard from a member of parliament. Go to parliament today. Go and check where the fires were. The fire, the particular fire that you saw mm. was at the security office. That is the guys who guard the mausoleum. Where, mm. they, where they sit, no one would have gone behind parliament to light a fire. Mm. You light fire in front of parliament or you burn the parliament itself. They did not do that. So the state allowed goons to do these things. Then the state did a, a bit of cover-up by setting fires around parliament to show that the country is under siege. Okay, so we saw an interesting video yeah. um, of the Tuesday happenings, which you know gives rise to what you're saying now. When you realized that things were actually going south and you are now telling people, and we saw it over socials as well, yeah. go home, uh, leave the city because things are about to get ugly. But you were told well, you're not our leader. I got punched in the face. Yeah, man. it was interesting to see that that happened. But there was actually the call for people to disengage from what was happening at that point because it did get pretty ugly and say, then now go home. Mm. But that was not heeded too. Some people, quite a number of people, did try to leave yeah. or the city. But then there was still the insistence on staying. Who were those who insisted on staying? Was it a mix of people? protesters who were previously peaceful in addition to the goons who were there so there were protesters actually who are ignorant they've never done this before mm. Mm. and uh rex uh Masai was shot at night mm. mm -hmm. and what normally happens when it gets dark the police are chasing people to go home yeah but where are you going to and there are no buses mm. and there are no border borders in town mm. and then you get mugged because even my nieces and nephews four of them so my niece came with her friends to the protest she's 18 and she's in high school mm. and on their way home they got marked all of them mm. and they're almost beaten mm. and they're four, four, four small girls mm. and so my idea was it was before 4 p.m mm. say go home because it's early mm. and you can walk in groups mm -hmm. but you see there were goons who are trying to get let let's stay let's say so they can rob people and then you you know because there's so many protesters on kenyatta avenue mm. and kwenanga street there was the absence of police mm -hmm. so it means the more the, you had more goons at that particular time than peaceful people because by that time what has come had come out mm. people are burning the supreme court people mm. are trying to burn city hall and let me tell you from experience i've been to many many protests um peaceful protesters don't burn down things mm. they understand those things you don't go unless you have a criminal intent yeah and no one comes to a protest as a peaceful protester with criminal intent you don't start burning things and hitting pol police with stones because you understand very well you throw stones police have guns sure even yesterday's protest, mm. you saw people throwing stones at the police. I'm like, nah, you're not peaceful protesters. Mm. Yeah. So a number of things happened. I mean, all of this. So Tuesday just became quite a thing. And then we saw, you know, sporadic other activities that happened in other parts of the city and the country. Yes. Which all then culminated in the president speaking on Tuesday night. Yeah. Right? Wednesday night he spoke. Yeah. And it was the complete withdrawal and rejection. So yeah. it seemed like there was an answer to what was being done asked for by the protest that started a week before that yes was that enough so number one on tuesday the president lacks compassion and empathy and he came and accused people of treason there was no treason from the protesters mm. uh the treason was committed by the state by trying to overthrow the will of the people and the voice of the people and the president language was very dehumanizing mm. because people in mourning Mothers had lost their babies, people had lost their spouses. It was just a sad day for the country. And the, pres the president is supposed to be a unifier, not a divider. His language, his tone was just off. And it speaks about a man who's not, who doesn't even know what he's doing. Because if you're used to having your way, then you get, you get challenged by 19, 18 year old kids mm. telling you, you know what, that's not the way to go. If you're going to spend our money, you need to explain where you're spending our money and where you're going to spend that money. So the president was challenged. Then he came out guns blazing. Then And people told him we can't do that. Mm. So the following day, because he's a puppet of the West, IMF, World Bank, and the, and the people that he's signing all these deals with, tell him you can't speak like that. 
then he comes back and lies to the country that six people died mm. and that's not true so is the man in charge or is the man doesn't know what's really happening to a level where the president has to actually call the military to, to his help that means he's not fully in control of the government so the rejection of the bill in its entirety then was essentially not enough is that what you're saying uh so was it enough it's too too little too late mm. people did not have to die mm -hmm. for him to reject the bill people have been talking about for for for, for weeks saying this bill is bad for the country mm -hmm. and the and the argument is very very simple if you don't have enough money you budget well if you don't have enough money you don't buy carpets and luxurious cars and do renovations if you don't have money we don't give your wife and your deputy's uh, spouse over a billion shillings 1.3 billion actually the gents actually have a, have a problem they say you you work here you work here you work here your spouses don't get salary from this place why mm. are you giving your spouse a salary and they don't have a they don't have a, they don't have a job they don't have a job what's the job description that you have that you have to be given over 700 million shillings people are saying if your game is that low man raise your game so you don't have to give your wife so much money and there's so many illegalities in that budget you remember there's a guy called uh who's a finance minister called uhuru kenyatta mm. and then he had he, he tried to do a heist with that uh computer era you remember that computer era many mm. years ago mm. and this now this is now this is actually same kind of theft the guy wants to budget with money in his pocket he wants to get all the money then spend the way he wants we're saying it's our taxes and you're saying he claims the president claims because i don't think it's true that your service in debt we want to know what debt are we paying because so audit the debt because the biggest uh, the biggest thing they ever said when he was running for office we got empty coffers money was stolen but he has never made any effort to go after the stolen money so whose debt are we paying is this a leaderless movement like they've been saying yes i think it's a more uh uh horizontal leadership mm -hmm. uh, everyone is at par so they're saying you all have one voice you want the same things in a way yes it is but are there no influencers in the, within this group like there, there are people who will come together and wait, when someone says something then they seem to have sway there's uh there are people who actually who are who are very instrumental in the movement and i think hanifa is one of them i think top stops she leads she's there she's compassionate she cares been raising money then the others uh there's crazy nairobi and there's osumo they may they may defy on opinion and tactics but they are still all on the same page mm -hmm. yeah the people who organize the x spaces yes the, like the ones we're seeing running for many hours and very many people joining mm -hmm. in are they the same ones that we see on the street uh or is there like a, you know a different thing that's happening online i think something else that's happening on the ground so there's more people who are vocal online and more uh, less visible offline and then the people who are more visible offline and less vocal online so there's a there's a bit of both so do you want to you know, yes i wanted to ask you see the when every, when one talks about the leadership issue yeah. the presence or the absence of it i think the question is being asked in the traditional sense of leadership mm -hmm. because political movements have had to do with rallies and and gatherings in open spaces and people stand up to speak so you can easily recognize but if you're talking about leadership in this era it looks like who is followed who is listened to who has people who are tuned into the message that they have which takes me to how long has this conversation been taking place because it in my opinion it appears that the dissatisfaction has existed for a long time mm. Mm. And somehow people coalesced now around the finance bill. The finance bill was the tipping point. Mm. They were already happy. They were dissatisfied. Then the finance bill comes about, and it's the question it's do trigger. has been asking has been answered. Mm. This is now the straw that broke the camel's back. They say Lapana, this one, and yet the leadership that is being spoken of, there are many people who have voices that people follow and listen to. It's not one person, mm. but on this particular matter, they seem to have agreed. And so they've come together and it's a diversity now this is new mm -hmm. from my opposition it's new so one can't say it is rally or dinga who has called this rally <laughs> and no and it really helps because there's no one to compromise but yeah. then again we've mm -hmm. seen this kind of things happen like in egypt 
it was a leaderless yeah. movement mm. organized on social media that ended up with people pouring onto the streets yeah. uh, in Cairo, in Tahrir Square, that forced the president, Mubarak, out of office. Yeah. And then thereafter, the, all these people retreated, and it appears like, you know, their fire was just snuffed out. What they were pushing for was not realized. There was no one to carry, a, to carry on that movement. We saw it again in Khartoum. People came out, and they wanted a change. They were tired, they were pissed off, and the price of bread was the tipping point that time. And they came out and they said, okay, so yeah, yeah, enough of this thing, the military dictatorship, Bashir, get out, go. <coughs> they go back home, look what happened. Yeah. So the issue I'm asking is, if there's no leader, yes. but then we have seen lessons from elsewhere where these leaderless movements have actually ended up achieving something, but not achieving something at the same time, what happens? What lessons do we learn? Actually, yes. I, I lived in New York when Occupy Wall Street was happening. And Occupy Wall Street was the same, same model, mm. no leader, you come to the, they used to have daily meetings, you come and meet, you agree what you're going to agree, and then if you don't agree, you don't implement. And what ended, ended up happening is that they stayed there for months, they got zero results, and people went to jail. Mm. Like, the, not a single Wall Street banker went to jail, but the protesters went to jail. Mm. And I would advise the Gen Zs to find a way to get people they trust, to lead the conversation and say, this is what you want, and to have non-negotiables and say, this is how you become the leader, these are non-negotiable, this is how you represent. Because if you want to implement ideas or execute ideas, who does that? Because right now I think that a lady like Anifa is carrying a very big burden. She's going to many hospitals, she's, she's handling phone calls, I, she's, her emotional and physical state is stretched. Mm. And so, but if she had a committee to lead, like Mao Zedong, well, it, was a, it was a committee that helped implement the Great Leap. If we look at Communist China, is led by a committee mm. and so form a committee that can actually help articulate your issues and then maybe and then maybe find elders to guide you on how to go about it because they 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 have a moment and if they don't seize the moment it will fizzle out right now they have everybody's attention mm. so make the demands now and make, make non-negotiables i think they can still do a one million march and get the government to give them security and to stop killing them because the government this week allowed goons hired by politicians to kill its young people which was a betrayal of what they're trying to do and 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 the things that happened this mm, week mm. are unforgivable if ruto thinks there's anything he's going to do in the next two years or in the next one week that will make these young people forgive him he can forget about it these are unforgivable please like and subscribe to make sure you never miss a beat